Well, good morning and a happy Sunday. I, uh, I'm just off to make one bag. And yeah, check it out. Second night in the new house. So it's kind of a wreck in there. There's a sneak peek, I guess, but uh, furniture's coming next week. Uh, we got the table put together. Uh, no TV, no internet, nothing like that. So it's actually been kind of a nice two evenings to spend in there, just playing some games and doing some crafts, no TV. Um, we're getting a fairly nice Chinook, so the deck is drying off of snow anyways. Yesterday, however, Dad and I, we uh, had to go back up to the uh, to the auction sale yard there up in Spirit River. I bought this hopper. This is actually kind of cool. So we were looking for, my dad was looking at building one. Uh, or they're they're a similar style to like a similar principle i guess not style to there's there's easy feeder and stuff like that i have a feeling what this guy used this for was he put it either probably on his forks of his tractor filled it with feed and then he could drive along his bunks there's a hydraulic motor on the back of this and just turn it on auger out the feed so uh what i want to do though is at the moment i have to uh bring my uh, what i do is i fill up a mini bulk bag with grain i put it up high on the forks i stick this uh piece of what is a seven inch auger tube or six inch auger tube i stick it in there down in the bottom in the duffel part put this uh put this clamp around it this uh, duct tape here just so it doesn't fall out and then i can open and close it to fill the 50 pound bags just pretty simple I'm no fabricator, but I'm uh, pretty proud of how that all works. So I hang it up on the on the forks, and then I got to stand underneath it, put the 50 pound bags on the scale here, <clears throat> open that up till I get to 50 pounds or whatever I'm filling, then tie them up. My plan with that hopper is I can fill that hopper up, drive it in here, set it up on a stand. My dad's gonna build a stand. We're gonna put an electric motor on it, not a hydraulic motor on it. Put a switch, you can flip the switch. It'll auger out 50 pounds into the bag and life will be good. That way you're not standing underneath, you know, of a, of a 2000 pound bag hunched over waiting for the straps to break and it to fall and kill you. It actually must have rained last night. Look at that, eh? I got uh, serious issues now with old uh, Loretta, the telehandler here. So that fuse that kept blowing, I talked about it a few videos ago, that it's the fuse for the toggle switch here that lets you select your steering from just the front wheels turning to circle steer or crab steer. I can't even put a fuse in it now, it just blows instantly. So I got, uh, I'm not sure why that's happening, but uh, we will get it figured out. It's not the end of the world at the moment because, I mean, I, it just steers now like a regular machine, right? Just the front tire steer. Although, I don't know if it's a little bit longer or what, but it needs a it needs a wide area to turn. It's got a big turning radius. But at least it still works. Um, the new starter, new batteries, new alternator, new everything. That's all working very well. I get my 14 volts, even with the, the fan and the um, lights on. I get uh, good cab heat now with the thermostat in there. Uh, there's no coolant leaks or anything, so pretty happy with the way things are going. So that uh, Atco building over there, that was our that was our C can, our storage unit, and uh, now we got to transfer everything from there over to the house. So fortunately, a buddy of mine had this man basket, which has been awful handy. We've been using that for everything. Fits right on the forks. Uh, I don't have it strapped to the forks now because I don't plan to lift her up very high. But yeah, she's been filling the basket right up with all the boxes. Then we take it over, lift it right up on the deck so she's only got to walk in and out. Makes quick work of that. Then also I don't have to be involved past a little bit of machinery operating. Still some stuff in the trailer yet, TVs and things like that to come, a bunch of kids toys. But I think today she's gonna work at getting that echo shed empty. And then uh, we'll be waiting on some furniture from town, and we'll be uh, we'll be all set. Well, I got my uh, my 50-pound bags bagged up, and uh, I figured probably a good day to burn this little brush pile out in front. So that's the trees that they cleared for uh, 
for the house. There's a, where was another pile? I think there's another pile right there. That's mostly just dirt and roots, but the, uh, actually the guy that dug the septic tank in, he shook all the dirt out when he came back before he took his hole away and then piled that up for us. So we'll get that burnt. Won't be such an eyesore all winter. Got a nice little west breeze, so it carries the smoke and uh, everything away from the house. And then also because it's Sunday, it's uh, it's bin checking day. So uh, right after fall, we check these every day, every single day, until we start to see the numbers consistently dropping. And then we'll move on to like every week. And then, you know, by January, February, it's not so important because by then we've, well, in normal years, by then we've taken some grain out. This year, we've actually taken grain out already. So that's why all of these bins dropped way off. I took, uh, I took some grain out of every one of these bins. These short bins only have three sensors in them, but uh, you can see the one that's in the grain has been steadily dropping and it is still dropping. The ones that are out of the grain, they're gonna go down in the morning when you check them or overnight when it's minus 20 or whatever. And then when the sun warms the bin up because there's no grain touching it, it's gonna go up. So they're not reliable anymore. You just have to make sure that uh, that you know this cable. So this is the same size bin as the one I just had on the screen, but it has a longer cable. The cable goes right to the floor. Um, there was a mix up when we ordered the other ones. So they don't actually go all the way to the floor. They go basically down to that two rings up. This one goes all the way to the floor. And that's why you can see it's got more. So even the bottom one, because that's just how long it takes for grain to either cool down or warm up. When it was minus 30, this grain cooled right down to minus 5, and it hasn't even had time to warm up yet, as, uh, like, the outside temperature right now is 5 or 6 degrees. So out of the 30 bins we have, I've only, there's only two bins that I haven't taken grain out of yet. One is that bale in there with the orange door. That's actually got, like, three-year-old barley in it. Uh, it's got a cable that goes right to the floor, and it hasn't even, it hasn't even budged, so, uh, and I guess that's kind of a lie because I did take a six, 600 bushel load out of it once and then I filled it back up. So it's uh, that's the only one. Um, and then our hopper bin of canola. And actually, yeah, okay, those two bins of... One bin of oats hasn't had anything out of it yet. So, so this canola bin was one that had kind of gone up a little bit. So when was it? Which sensor was it? So this one here went 23, 24, 25. I took a little bit out of it, not very much. And then you can see it went 25, 24, 23. So it all drops down. And now these tiny little bins, these are only like 1200 bushel bins. We didn't waste time getting the cable for them. So we just stick a rod in the door. That rod actually is long enough to go all the way through. Um, and you can stick one down from the top if you want to, but uh, I don't get that serious about that. Not that I want to lose any of the barley, right? Because a 1300 bushel bin of barley, if it's malt at, I mean, we'll just say 10 bucks. I think it's it's right around 975 or something I heard, uh, right? That's $13,000. So you don't want to, you definitely don't want to laugh it off and be like, oh, it's not worth it because a cable for that would probably be like six, 700 bucks. Uh, potentially save you $13,000, but uh, we don't worry too much about it. They don't stay full very long. I mean, we empty them out right away and because uh, we really like to have them in, in, the, in harvest because when you're filling up a 12,000 bushel bin and you're, you got like three rounds left in the field and the bin's full, where do you put the grain, right? So we have some 12,000s, we have some uh, 5,000s, we got some 4,000s, we got some 2,500s, 2,750s, 1600 bushel hopper bins a couple of them there's uh 2000 bushel bin some 1300s so we like to keep that good mix of, of different size bins so we can i mean no matter what harvest throws at us we can we can get it figured out you know being have to unload part of a truck of, of whatever we got small bins big bins hopper bins whatever not many hopper bins we only got like two but when the grain back worked good it was it was the cheapest way to store grain so if you're going to buy a bunch of a bunch of hopper bins, your cost per bushel is like double. 
I guess uh, <laughs> Corey and the kids were watching from the house while I was up checking the bins. And I just walked down and they said, I think you're catching little straw bales on fire. And uh, yeah, this little piece of wood right here started on fire. So, kick some snow onto that. Cause I don't want to burn up my uh, my little baby straw straw bales. I don't even know how that would have caught on fire. Whew. All right. Well, I think it's got to be getting on maybe three or four o'clock. Um, it is Sunday, so I'm not going to work the whole day away. But wanted to come up here, get the waters cleaned out, make sure that they're still working. Um, and they are. One was actually overfilling there. Pigs, they got a lot of feed left. Uh, I think they're going for the butcher this week, at least. Maybe all of them, I don't know. Cows, I think they're going this week. So we'll just have Chippy left, the little one, and the llamas. I don't know, probably the llamas and Chippy will move into here over the winter. Chickens are still freeloading chickens. My, uh, my good friend uh, Stan, the gentleman farmer on YouTube, he's done a couple of videos today and yesterday about chickens. He knows a lot about chickens. So uh, about like the economics of eggs and why your chickens have stopped laying. Uh, of course, all of this stuff I don't know anything about because I don't know anything about chickens. But uh, it explains why my 25 chickens aren't laying any eggs the last couple of weeks. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out the gentleman farmer on YouTube because uh, there's some pretty good... Uh, some pretty good content there and certainly some uh some really good content for uh <clears throat> sheep chickens soil health soil management all that sort of stuff homesteading hobby farming farming in general but uh everybody's fed and watered so uh i'm gonna head in Corey and the kids have been unpacking in the house all day and uh i've been burning the brush pile working around outside so i'm gonna go in i'm gonna help them Get, do some of the heavy lifting and uh yeah and then call her a night i think so as always thanks for watching we'll see you all on the next one